журналісти, партнери, друзі. Ми завершуємо вже другу велику конференцію з відновлення України. Щиро вдячній Великій Британії за прийом та організацію такого потужного заходу. Дякую всім партнерам і союзникам, які стоять пліч-опліч з Україною в ці важкі для нас часи. Наша стійкість – це сила українського народу, помножена на військову, фінансову, санкційну, гуманітарну підтримку наших партнерів і союзників. Україна завжди пам'ятатиме тих, хто сьогодні допомагає нам у боротьбі і у відновленні. Під час конференції з відновлення солідарність світу з Україною проявилась не лише в деклараціях, але також в конкретних практичних результатах нашої конференції. По-перше, Європейський Союз анонсував новий середньостроковий інструмент підтримки України на 50 мільярдів євро. Це надзвичайний сигнал, який демонструє віру в європейське майбутнє України. Дуже вдячні за це Європейській комісії, особисто пані президенті Урсулі фон дер Ляйн, прем'єр-міністр Великої Британії Ріші Сунак також анонсував нову програму підтримки в розмірі 3 мільярдів фунтів стерлінгів на наступні три роки. Фактично, це теж середньострокова програма підтримки, яка теж дає нам бачення майбутньої перспективи, спільної майбутньої перспективи у відновленні. Крім цього, Міністерство енергетики України та МЗС Великої Британії уклали меморандум про енергетичне партнерство, яке передбачає створення нового фонду викликів у сфері зелених інновацій «Innovations Ukraine» у розмірі 62 мільйони фунтів стерлінгів. Ми також підписали чергову угоду з Міжнародним банком реконструкції та розвитку, яка дозволить залучити 1,76 мільярди доларів США для фінансування нагальних потреб нашої країни і українців. Ми вдячні США, Великій Британії, Фінляндії за підтримку цієї ініціативи, як донорів цієї ініціативи. Європейський банк реконструкції та розвитку підтримує українські державні енергетичні компанії «Укргідроенерго», «Укренерго», «НАК «Нафтогаз України», на суму 600 мільйонів євро. Це кошти для того, щоб підсилити нашу енергетичну систему і сприяти нашій енергетичній незалежності протягом цього року. Європейський інвестиційний банк розпочне новий портфель проєктів для відбудови України на суму понад 500 мільйонів євро. США анонсували виділення 1,3 мільярди доларів. Ці кошти будуть направлені на відбудову та відбудову будівництво транспортної інфраструктури на реалізацію проєктів у сфері цифровізації, а також посилення енергетичної стійкості України. Німеччина анонсувала виділення додаткових 381 мільйони євро, які будуть направлені в тому числі на гуманітарне розмінування, що є одним з п'яти наших пріоритетів швидкого відновлення. Під час конференції ми також провели чергове відновлення засідання координаційної платформи донорів України. Відтепер співголовою платформи став віце-прем'єр-міністр України з відновлення Олександр Кубраков. Ми посилюємо нашу координацію з партнерами по пріоритетному питанню відновлення нашої держави. У зв'язку з цим міністр фінансів перестав бути співголовою, відповідно, віце-прем'єр з відновлення співголовою в цій координаційній платформі. Ми представили конкретні проекти відбудови, представили також систему DREAM, яка дозволить забезпечити максимальну прозорість і підзвітність відбудови. Працюємо над мобілізацією 14,1 мільярдів доларів, необхідних на пріоритетні проекти відбудови протягом наступних 12 місяців. Разом з нашими міжнародними партнерами ми формуємо коаліцію відновлення «We Build Ukraine» разом з бізнесом з України та з усього світу ми також формуємо коаліцію для інвестицій в Україну. Ukraine Business Compact. Вже 400 міжнародних компаній долучились до відповідної ініціативи. Ми розуміємо, що для відновлення приватних інвестицій нам необхідно створити діючий та ефективний інструмент страхування військових ризиків. Разом з ЄС, Норвегією, Швейцарією та ЄБРР ми підписали угоду про спільну роботу в цьому напрямку. 
ми перезапустимо ринок страхування. Власне, у нас вже є перемога на цьому шляху. Багатостороннє агентство з гарантій інвестицій МІГА групи Світового банку почало надавати гарантії страхування воєнних ризиків в Україні. І відповідна угода була підписана з німецьким банківським холдингом про кредит. Під час конференції ми всі наголошували, що приватний бізнес, приватний сектор буде в центрі відбудови. Ми пропонуємо перспективи перспективні галузі для інвестицій. Ми пропонуємо конкретні проекти та співпрацю. Під час конференції підписали низку угод у різних сферах. Це дуже перспективні напрямки, коли міжнародні компанії будуть заходити на ринок України. І дуже важливо, що матимуть зразу українських партнерів на вході. Ще декілька важливих меседжів, які були озвучені і багато разів звучали під час цієї конференції, є надзвичайно важливими політичними заявами для України. По-перше, наші партнери підтримують ідею використання заморожених російських активів для відбудови України. Це про те, що ми говоримо весь останній рік, Росія має заплатити за всі ці руйнування, за всі трагедії, які вона здійснила і здійснює в Україні під час цієї неспровокованої, несправедливої, брудної агресії. Під час конференції наші партнери теж про це говорили, і це дуже важливе зрушення, коли ми всі знаходимося на одній сторінці. Росія має заплатити. Другий меседж, який теж постійно звучав в цьому приміщенні, це те, що Україна буде членом Європейського Союзу. Ми в цьому абсолютно переконані, ми робимо дуже багато змін для того, аби швидко реалізувати ці наші прагнення. Ми бачимо, що ці зміни та швидкі реформи змінюють ставлення багатьох наших союзників щодо того, наскільки швидко ми можемо пройти цей шлях. Ще раз хотів би подякувати всім учасникам, всім вам, шановні колеги і друзі. Завдяки спільній роботі Україна теж стає сильнішою. Ми відбудуємо Україну як частину єдиної процвітаючої Європи і гарантуємо мир і добробут наступним поколінням. Дякую за вашу увагу, дякую за вашу підтримку. Слава Україні! So, uh, let's uh, start uh, questions. Uh, your question, please, sir. Доброго ранку, пане прем'єр-міністр. I'm uh, Michael Bacirki. I'm a contributor to CNN Opinion and commentator on other global media. Prime Minister, I have two quick questions. Up until now in the war, various opposition uh, entities in Ukraine have portrayed a united front. It's been very impressive um, and have said there's only one enemy, Russia. Yet yesterday, Kiev Mayor Vitaly Klitschko put out a video uh, criticizing unnamed authorities for launching a stormy campaign to discredit the capital authorities and him. He said there is endless searches to paralyze the city and he, it's brought chaos. I'm, asking you to your thoughts about this, not to put you on the spot, but to clear the air during this important event. And then quickly, secondly, Deputy Prime Minister Yulia Svidorenko said yesterday that uh, Ukraine plans to increase in GDP in dollar terms 620% over a period of 10 years. That would be about 20% a year, more than post-war Germany grew at nearly 10% per annum through the 1950s. So, 20% a year sounds a lot. Is that uh, perhaps a bit of um, wishful thinking, or do you think it's achievable? Thank you. Thank you so much. So uh, first of all, I should say that uh, during this war, we all understand that we should be very, very united inside of Ukraine, politically, uh, in military sense, in all senses, we should be very united. and. Uh, there couldn't be opposition because we are fighting for our lives, for our families, for our land, for democratic principles and values. Uh, so because of this, uh, you are right, there is no opposition, we all are united. And very important to save this unity for all the partners all around the world, all in all democratic world, in European Union, 
And we are fighting for this, for unity of all democratic uh, world. Uh, about uh, our strategy, uh, once again, now we have a war, and it's uh, tremendously uh, tough to find uh, proper, uh, proper numbers, proper prognosis, and we do it in conditions of uh, unfamous uh, and invisible future. So uh, now we are forming our vision how our country sh should develop, and we are giving frameworks of our future development and our visions. Uh, so we understand that after this war, when our partners, when Ukraine will use confiscated Russian assets and invest this for recovery of Ukraine, this will increase our GDP, our economy in times per year. So we understand that uh, 7, 8, maybe 10 percent yearly growing of GDP are immediately after war if we will uh, create and when we will create uh, proper conditions for investment for businesses which, will, which were presented here on this conference, uh, our economy could grow in very rapid way. So it's possible. We analyze many uh, economies of the world. We analyze the best practices. And we can see that uh, this is possible. So because of this, we uh, gave this prognosis. We gave this uh, frameworks. We gave this strategies and uh, directions for development of special spheres and uh, industries in our country. This is like a signals. Uh, but practical life will uh, demonstrate and we will see this everything. Uh, now we are very concentrated on creation uh, special, very beneficial conditions for our partners in Ukraine for investing. And one of the main questions, as I comment, is uh, insurance of war risks uh, for bringing more our partners and foreign businesses into Ukraine. Thank, Thank you. you. Your question, please. Um, Here, here. Uh, rise up your hand, please. Uh, Burak here from Anadolu. Uh, since the start of the war, uh, Turkey has been playing important role for a peace deal. Uh, how would you evaluate Turkey's uh, mediated efforts? And uh, do you think that uh, a peace deal can be hammered by Turkish efforts? Mr. Prime Minister, thank you. Thank you so much. We appreciate all efforts of our partners, colleagues, allies, friends uh, for supporting Ukraine, uh, for bringing peace to our land. Uh, we are fighting once again for our freedom, for our lives. Uh, Turkey is a very important partner, is neighbor country for us. Uh, we are very grateful for uh, Black Sea Grain Initiative, with which Turkey support, and it let all of us, all the world, have so needed grain from Ukraine for Middle East countries, for African countries, for European countries. So uh, we appreciate all the efforts of Turkey, Turkey president, government, and we hope that we all together with all our partners, with Turkey, with Europe, with the United States, with the United Kingdom, will reach peace in my country. We will win and liberate all Ukrainian territory according to the internationally recognized borders as on 1991. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the next question, uh, yours, sir. Thank you very much, Prime Minister. Um, yesterday, President Zelensky said that the counteroffensive is going slower than, than the de desired. Do you think that this message um, had maybe a negative impact on this conference, especially towards the investors? And secondly, if I may, as all European leaders yesterday said that uh, uh, Ukraine will be in the EU uh, in, the, in the near future and in NATO uh, probably, when do you envisage that? When do you expect Ukraine to be part of the EU, a part of NATO? I mean, maybe this, uh, uh, this uh, de decade or later? Thank you very much. Thank you so much. 
first part of your question. Uh, so, as President of Ukraine have said yesterday, uh, contraffensive is not Hollywood uh, movie, is not easy walk. Uh, contraffensive is number of military operations. Uh, sometimes it's offensive, sometimes it's defensive, sometimes it could be uh, tactical pauses. Uh, unfortunately, during our preparation for this counteroffensive, Russians were preparing too. So there is so much uh, minefields which really make it uh, slower uh, to, uh, I mean, movement into their head. But uh, during the last two weeks, Ukrainian army liberated eight villages in Ukraine. Uh, territory, liberated territory is more than uh, 113 square kilometers. It's a huge territory. We move into a head on seven kilometers, I mean in deep of uh, line of the front on, on the occupied uh, site. So we have good results, uh, but uh, we should all understand that uh, we, uh, every life for us is very important, every life. So uh, we will not bring our people into the fire of this war as Russians doing. So uh, Soviet, uh, Russian Soviet army is not counting on the uh, human life, on the people, uh, but we are fighting for NATO standards. We save every our soldiers, soldier, and uh, we will do very smart uh, offensive operations, and because of this, it could take time, but uh, we have intention to move into a head. We are moving into a head with counteroffensive. Uh, uh, we all should have a patient and will see results, I'm sure, and we're all absolutely optimistic for liberation of all of our uh, land occupied by Russians. The second part of your question, uh, EU and NATO, uh, Ukrainian aspirations, we do our best. We implement all the uh, recommendations, uh, di uh, directives and uh, rules of EU. Now we are in process of uh, self-screening of Ukrainian legislation to uh, Aki, European uh, legislation and directives. Uh, till the end of this year, we will uh, implement all the uh, directives and, I mean, seven recommendations. We will finish self-screening procedures, and we will be absolutely ready for negotiation procedures uh, for the uh, EU membership. Uh, I think we are moving uh, in very fast way, and we are not thinking about decades or uh, 10 years. We are thinking about nearest times, about nearest years, and we do our best uh, to implement this in reality. About NATO, it's very important for Ukraine, and it's not only for Ukraine. This is for Europe. Uh, membership of Ukraine in the NATO is crucial uh, for uh, future European security. So I think that it also will take not so much time as you mentioned, but much, much faster. We are waiting that during this summit in Vilnius, uh, allies uh, will be very concrete in, uh, in conditions, in dates, in their messages. And uh, we are waiting this, we are working for this. I should note that Ukrainian army now is NATO army. We are fighting by NATO weaponry, uh, with NATO weaponry, we are fighting according to NATO standards. Uh, our army is uh, trained uh, in NATO countries. So, uh, de facto, Ukrainian army now is absolutely uh, prepared according to NATO standards, NATO army, uh, with very, very practical experience, which we may share with allies and uh, bring this new practical experience to NATO standards. So thank you so much for your question. Uh, your question, please. Judith from the Spanish news agency, Agencia EFE. Uh, Mr. Cleverly said earlier that there have been in this conference uh, significant pledges from the commercial world. Uh, can we have a number for that? And also, um, how is it possible for a company to invest in Ukraine when there is a war on, meaning how can they be guaranteed some profit, which I suppose is what they will be looking for? Thank you. 
Thank you so much. I uh, named the main numbers in my uh, introductory word. Uh, I can repeat that the main uh, amount is uh, 50 billion euros from European Commission and European Union for the next four years. It's, uh, there is many agreements. We will analyze these results and summarize this amount in nearest days and we'll announce this because during these days many businesses have their own negotiations. They sign agreements, memorandums. So uh, let's uh, take some time and uh, analyze and summarize all of these results. But the main result is that British and international business is very interested uh, in participation in Ukrainian recovery. Uh, because it will be the biggest business project since the Second World War on the European continent. Uh, according to the World Bank estimation, uh, $411 billion uh, US dollars is amount of losses and needs uh, for uh, Ukrainian recovery. And this is estimation only uh, territories under Ukrainian control. I think after liberation, all Ukrainian territories, uh, territories uh, this amount will be double. And we understand that this is project uh, for uh, dozens of years for all European and uh, international businesses. And the main principles which we, uh, during one year, uh, announced, United in Defense, United in Recovery, is very important for our partners, for uh, countries which support us. And uh, today and yesterday we discussed with businesses uh, important issues how to invest to Ukraine. Actually, this is what you ask about. Uh, we create a special infrastructure for recovery, special state agency. We create special conditions for investors uh, through the industrial parks, uh, through the direct investments in Ukraine. Uh, state agency Ukraine Invest is uh, supporting any investor who invests more than uh, uh, 12 uh, uh, million dollars uh, projects in Ukraine, but now we are working to create legislation uh, when we will support and uh, go with investor for smaller amount of uh, money because we understand that we should support small and medium business also. And yesterday we discussed this on the meeting with businesses. Actually, business asked many questions during this conference. Uh, we uh, ask many of these questions, but it is very important that this is uh, to uh, direction uh, movement. So uh, we ask business and have answers and business have answers too. And we will uh, make more progress in creation better conditions. So this is the result of this conference uh, that we understand what business want. Investment during the war should be covered by uh, war risk insurance. And we again discussed this. It was uh, proposals of United Kingdom uh, one year ago on L during Lugano conference. Today, after one year of mutual work, uh, we have concrete results. Again, I sounded this. Uh, international agencies, uh, international partners are financing actually this issue of uh, insurance of war and political risks in Ukraine during this war and after this war. So this is a key uh, challenge for many businesses how to ensure their investments. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you. The next question is yours, uh, sir. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, rise up your hand. Yes. Thank you. Taras uh, Yatsenko, Media Hub, Tvoye or your city, Lviv and Kyiv. Uh, Mr. Prime Minister, there have been uh, many conversations throughout these two days uh, about um, about the uh, rec Ukraine's recovery, its processes, investments, funding uh, mechanisms. But what about people? Uh, we all know that both private and public sector already lack many professionals in Ukraine. We know that due, according to United Nations data from March of 2023, almost 5 million Ukrainians received special status in other countries, uh, in Europe and more other Western countries, and uh, more than 8 million left Ukraine. Uh, is there any strategy, uh, of, uh, does the government has any strategy of communicating with these people, of getting them back? And don't you think that there should be a um, special ministry for refugees? Thank you. 
Thank you so much. Uh, important uh, challenge, and uh, I should uh, add some statistics. Uh, since beginning of this war, Ukraine lost 3.5 million jobs in our country. We lost more than 30% of our GDP. Uh, more than 4.5 million people are refugees uh, out of Ukraine, uh, mostly women and children about 1 million children in this, in, in this uh, amount of, uh, in this quantity of people. So we have some uh, researchers which uh, tell us that 85% of Ukrainians would like to come back to Ukraine uh, after this war. So the main conditions for their uh, coming back into Ukraine uh, are security. This is number, number one condition. Uh, the war should finish and we should bring security. It's NATO membership, it's uh, protection and air, air defense, uh, it's closed borders. So all of these issues plus we uh, make special parameters for security in schools, hospitals and all around, even in living houses. So uh, this is uh, the condition number one for many refugees uh, which leave, uh, had left Ukraine in the beginning of this war. The second issue is uh, work. So all of these people, all of this mostly of uh, women, need to have uh, jobs and need to earn money in Ukraine. So because of this now we uh, implement many programs for small, micro, medium businesses. Uh, we uh, make grant programs. Uh, we make uh, light loans programs for small and medium business, 579, you know it, and grants for creation of uh, micro and uh, small businesses. Uh, but we uh, urge our partners to go to Ukraine and uh, create jobs. We also appreciate and very grateful to this British business uh, which stay in Ukraine despite the war and still uh, and continue play uh, the taxes and save the working places. Many of businesses even create additional uh, jobs for Ukrainians in Ukraine. So we really appreciate this. Uh, we understand which conditions we should create to bring back uh, Ukrainians from abroad. Uh, now we have some ideas and conceptions uh, and inside of the government we work to uh, present uh, our refugees and more than our refugees, all Ukrainians all around the world, uh, possibility and conditions uh, to go back to Ukraine. It's very important because you understand that even one million children, it's our future. So we are very interested to bring these this children back to Ukraine. But these jobs and these people, it's our GDP, taxes, it's our development, and we also are very interested in bringing back these uh, people uh, into Ukraine. Thank you, sir, for your question. Uh, thank you. The last question is yours, sir. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Bruno Manteguez from the Portuguese News Agency. You um, spoke about the medium-term uh, funding that you have uh, received pledges uh, during this conference. And during our uh, initial speech, you, you mentioned the uh, 6.5 billion that you were expecting to um, raise here. Um, have you been able to crunch the numbers and uh, know how much uh, have you uh, been able to, this gap, how much have you, have, you, have, you, have you got? Thank you. Thank you so much. Important, uh, important question, question, important issue. Uh, actually, I will repeat. According to the estimation of World Bank, uh, for the rapid recovery needs, it's five directions. It's uh, number one, uh, it's um, energy sector. So recovery of energy sector, immediate recovery because we are going to the next heating season, to the next winter, and we need uh, recover uh, energy generation, energy grid, uh, gas uh, supplying uh, capaci uh, capacities. So this is number one priority. Second priority is humanitarian demining because without this we can do nothing. Uh, everything is m under mining pollution. More than 174 square kilometers, uh, thousand, uh, I mean 174,000 square kilometers in Ukraine under mine pollution. So we should demine uh, because of this, uh, this is a second priority. Third priority is housing. We should repair houses and flats uh, that people could live normally. 
uh, fourth priority is uh, critical infrastructure repairing and economical support so for small and medium businesses as, as I told. So for these five directions we need 14.1 for next 12 months. In Ukrainian budget we have 3.3. We have about 4 billion uh, from our partners. We have additional money for other for different directions uh, which partners support, but we should be concentrated on this uh, rapid recovery needs according to the World Bank estimation. During our uh, multi-agency donor coordination platform yesterday, we discussed uh, this needs, additional need for 6.5. We understand how to cooperate with G7 countries and with uh, international financial organizations, and I'm sure that nearest time after this conference, uh, according to the results of this conference, we will collect all needed money and will invest this uh, for rapid recovery needs in Ukraine. Thank you so much for your question. Uh, dear colleagues, uh, thank you for your attention. Briefing is over. Thank you. Thank you so much. All the best to you. Thank you.